Today's video is a makes video. Everything I sewed in January of 2021. I'm Sharon, welcome to my channel, a channel all about sewing. In today's video, you're going to see the eight things that I sewed in January. Yep, eight. And actually five, because three of them took less than an hour each and I almost don't even wanna count them. So I didn't have a lot of sewing happening in the month of January, but what I did do, I want to share with you. In this video, you will see pictures and short video of the garments that I made in January. I'll be sure to share the pattern cover envelope and let you know what fabric I used on each item. Without further ado, let's see what I sewed in January. The Itch to Stitch Llama Hoodie is probably my January make that has seen the most wear this month. I really like this one. You most often can see me running around town with my neon colored tie dye llama hoodie with my workout leggings and a pair of tennies. So incredibly comfortable. I used a lightweight French terry and I sewed a size eight with the full bust option. And because the terry was so lightweight, I probably could have gone down a size. If I used a heavier fabric, I would stay the size that I'm at. And I have a whole video on it if you want more details on it. Just wanted to share, this is the make that has seen the most wear this month. I love it. Butter Egg 3124 is a Sandra Betsina design from 2001. I have sewn every version on this one over and over and over. And this month I sewed two of the view A, which is that sleeveless shell with the cowl neck. The black one, I used a rayon net. You can see it's softer and the cowl just kind of collapsed on itself. And the orange is a cotton lycra jersey. This little knit pattern does have a dart in it. And by the way, Sandra Pizzino was the first sewing instructor that ever introduced me to the idea of even putting a dart in a knit garment. And I think it works. This pattern is a great little layering piece. Vogue 9347 was released in 2018. I purchased this pattern because I thought it was a really cute little jacket pattern. However, the description in the back calls it a top. So I decided to try sewing it out of a lightweight blouse fabric, and I am so happy with the result. I like the look of it. It's a swing shape. It's flowy. It's got raglan sleeves. Got a little bit of a statement sleeve going on there with ruffle at the bottom. The collar does not stand up the way it is shown on the pattern envelope, and that's because of the lighter weight fabric that I used. And also, I did not use a heavy interfacing in the collar. I actually like it lower like that. I think it really frames my face. The other thing is the pattern only calls for two large buttons and I added more buttons down the front, probably I think they were a five eighths inch or half inch button, more like a blouse. Uh, the only reason it hasn't received a lot of wear yet is because we are still in the winter months here. I am ready when spring comes. I do have a full pattern review video and I will link that above if you want more information. T9185 was released in 2020 and this was an impulse buy when Hobby Lobby had patterns for $1.99 each. I was intrigued by that long cape topper and honestly, it's very impractical and I probably could have figured out how to do it myself. However, I bought the pattern so I tried it out. This is a cheap little knit from Walmart but I just wanted to see how it looked, how it went together. You can whip this up in less than an hour. It's very, very quick. It has a tiny little narrow, not a turtleneck. It's not as tight as a turtleneck, but there is a, um, a high collar. And really, it just drapes over your shoulders. Now, I'm 5'5", five five, so as you can see, it's coming down to my ankle. And that would be super impractical if I was actually wearing this anywhere. <laughs> It is a pullover, so you do need fabric that is fairly stretchy because you do want to make sure you can get that over your head. One side has the shoulder seam sewn. The other side, the shoulder seam is sewn just about to your uh, shoulder joint. And then you have those two long, drapey, capey things there. Wrong side of the fabric will show. Keep that in mind if you do sew this. And because I have a larger bust, when I do sew another one, I will need to add fabric to the center front because it is designed to go down just a little bit more. You can see my bust line is pulling that up a bit. 
you know, it's a great little piece that it has a little bit of drama and you can just throw it on if you're going to uh, maybe go to dinner and you want a little bit of warmth over your shoulders or you're watching TV and you want a little warmth over your shoulders. That's why I tried it. I feel like I should sew the pants or the top from the pattern just to make sure I'm getting my money's worth out of the pattern. Butter Egg 5562 was released in 2010, and I was going to sew View D, which is the green one with that big drapey collar. This was my fail for the month. I used a sweater knit. I put it all together while well, I started to put it together. And then I remembered that I don't like that big drapey collar. I had sewn one back in 2010, wore it once, and gave it away. It just, you have to fuss with it so much, and I did not like that. So I ended up taking that big drapey collar off. I didn't have enough fabric to make really cool sleeves or anything like that. So it's just a real basic little sweater. And honestly, I'm not too fond of it. I would probably see if one of my sisters would like it. Oh, well, win some, lose some. Now I'm going to make a note on my pattern. Do not sew view D because you're not going to like it. Vogue 1744 was released in 2020, but it was released as a rebrand. It used to be Vogue 9360. Now, I do have an entire review video on this top because I loved it so much, and there were a couple things I wanted to point out to everyone. Basically, it's a great little shirt pattern. I really like it. I like the high, low hem. There's that fullness in the back with a couple of pleats. There is a yoke in the back. There is a collar stand and a collar. There is a button cuff with two buttons, and I used a beautiful, beautiful voil from Minerva. I expect this shirt to see a lot of wear come spring. It's still rather chilly here, and with the lightweight voil, it's not warm enough to wear. I am looking for some fabric, and I'm looking specifically for a blue and white striped shirting because I have a vision in my mind of another one that I would like to sew. Vogue 1375 was released in 2013, a Sandra Betsina design, and I sewed View B, which is that simple handkerchief hem vest. I used this really interesting eyelash fabric that I purchased from Super Textiles on Etsy. I'll link to that shop in the description below. And this is for a girlfriend. This was a gift, and I modeled it before I sent it off. I actually think it's going to fit her better. She has broader shoulders than I do, and this has an extremely narrow um, shoulder seam and a very low armhole, as you can see. And here you can see the shape of it. It's a such an easy, easy sew. The only challenge was because of the fabric that I chose to use to sew this up. But I love the texture of it. I think it just adds a little bit to a very basic vest. And this pattern I wrote on the back of it, keep yoke instructions. Couldn't remember why I had written that until I pulled it out and started putting this together. There's a yoke in the back, which you can't see because it's black on black. And it's a faced yoke. And the instructions in this pattern are so good. That's why I wrote the note. I didn't want to lose the instructions for that. So uh, basic, basic vest, long vest with a handkerchief hem. And choose a really cool fabric. And you got yourself just a cute little piece to dress up some jeans and a tee. The last thing I sewed in January was a late Christmas gift. I used some old Barbie doll patterns that I had on hand and modified them to make my own designs and sewed a selection of six garments each for two little preschoolers. So they received a Barbie doll and a few easy to put on and off doll clothes. That's always fun for me to make these tiny little things. Those were my eight makes for the month of January. I am really hoping that I have more time in February to do some sewing. I'm actually wearing the first make that I made in the month of February. This is the Erin Dress by Style Sew so Me, and I'll have a video review up of that very soon because I really want you to see the photos and the video so you can see how it moves. It's a very comfortable dress that I know I will be wearing a lot this summer. Out of everything you sewed in January, what was your favorite make? That's it for today. Thumbs up if you enjoyed seeing everything I sewed in February. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And until next time, happy sewing. Everything you sewed in January.